Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Numbasa City. Today we'll be looking at a round three matchup of the Lyon League Cup from the 2019 format Sun and Moon to Celestial Storm. Um, it's the 2019 season, but it was actually taking place in the summer of 2018, right after Worlds. Um, if you know, Celestial Storm was the world's, uh, the world's set. Um, the matchup that we're going to be looking at today is Psychic Malamar, so not Ultra Necrozma, but really just Psychic Attackers, versus Magnazone. Magnazone, of course, using that Dustman Necrozma, um, doing 220 damage, if I'm not mistaken, for four metal, for three metal energy and one colorless, and just a whole lot of damage, being able to loop that attack thanks to Magnazone, are uh, really just streaming attackers, attaching lots of energy, recovering them with Mount Coronet. And on the other side, we have Psychic Malamar using cards like Necrozma and Dawnwing's Necrozma to really move around what's on the field. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so sorry about the framing of the video right now. Um, this video, the camera was in a poor angle, don't really know why normally I check before I start the video, but I guess I didn't this time. So there should be, I think it's two Incas on the left, and the bench is full, um, if I'm not mistaken. We do see a lot of Malamar come down and a lot of psychic recharge happening, so it's like um, yeah, we see a Malamar in hand, it's player A's on first turn only, so we saw that Lily up to 8. Um, really, I'd say almost a perfect start, lots of psychic energy in the discard, lots of NK on the bench, although we can only see one, there's, there are others. Um, and player B really doesn't have a whole lot going on. Um, promotes, yeah, promotes that Dialga. Doesn't use Overclock, but instead has Stevens Resolve in hand, so it can really search out another Stevens, a Magnemite, and maybe a second Magnemite. Um, a little about these two players. Um, Player on the left is a sort of world level judge. His name is Guy Champollion. He, uh, yeah, he's he's judged a lot of tournaments. Um, you'll see him mostly at side events, uh, these past few events. But he also um, does main event sort of stuff. From time to time, he started judging Yu-Gi-Oh, I think about a year ago. Uh, player B is Luca Klavodacher. He's sort of, he's been to Worlds multiple times. Qualified for Worlds multiple for ta multiple times. He won a few special events. Uh, definitely won in Madrid, if I'm not mistaken. Playing Greninja break. Um, yeah, so two... Sort of local players, um, not from the same country, but you know, in Europe, it's like, it's it's pretty easy to go from one country to the next, um, but two definitely higher ranking players. They know what they're doing, so we see a um, sort of a slow start. I mean, definitely one turn behind from player B. Uh, in regards to setup, and a stage 2 deck is really not something that you want to be behind on. You really want to get those basics down really early, really fast. Ready to become those stage 2s as soon as you draw that rare candy stage 2 combo. But, um, I mean, you know, you draw, I guess you draw what you draw. Um, and player A, you know, as I mentioned earlier, got really that perfect setup, has one or two Malamar in play, 
Got, I think, two psychic recharge, so probably two Melamon. Got two psychic recharge down that second turn. And we'll probably get a third one soon enough. And uh, yeah, so here comes a Cynthia, like bench two, Cynthia. We see that Ultra Ball, Rare Candy in hand. So, oh, looks like it was just a draw and attack from player A. Well, I guess, you know, once you have your setup and your opponent doesn't, you don't really need to do much else. Um, we'll see how this game proceeds, but um, yeah, so it's a rare candy magnet zone coming straight down and a lily for four. So pretty solid draw. We see an energy in hand. Uh, I don't think there's any energy in the discard pile. Again, sorry about the angle. Can't really see much, but we did just catch a glimpse of the of the discard pile, and yeah, there wasn't really much there. The bench is full, so that nest ball is unplayable. So I guess it's just an overclock for one. Kind of a weak start if player B has an energy in hand. Uh, yep, here comes energy, so it can be just a knockout. There's an ultra ball in hand, a rescue stretcher. I don't think anything that really needs to be played for the time being. So it's just a draw and a knockout. Um, Q to fly comes active. It's only got 30 HP, but it does have free retreat, so definitely the optimal Q to fly to play. Here comes a nest ball, probably gonna get out another attacker. Um, or a Q to fly to become another Rebombi. Yeah. Well, not another, but just a Rebombi. And. Yep. Yeah. Really. Here comes a Mount Coronet and a Cynthia is in hand. No supporter was played yet this turn, so definitely play the Cynthia first before Mount Coronet because if you draw into an Ultra Ball and an Energy, you're going to want to discard that Energy and then bring it back with Mount Coronet. So Cynthia should come down right now. Just wait for that to happen. Yep, there it is. Um, yeah. I'm sure there are other reasons why you want to play Mount Coronet afterwards, but in general, if you have access to an option and you're going to draw more cards, you draw more cards first, and then that way you really know what's going to happen next. Like, yeah, there are, there's another energy in hand, but I, I would use the GX attack first. Um, once you set up, there's no guarantee that you'll be able to use the GX attack again in the future. Um, if you're really far, if you suddenly become far further ahead, you know, you have psychic resistance, your opponent needs four energy in play to take that knockout, plus like a switch or some kind of retreat option. And I think the retreat option in the deck is, uh, in player A's deck, is that stadium altar of the moon. We see it in hand, so um, if I'm not mistaken, you need another energy in hand for that. But we see this, uh, yeah, we see the Altar of the Moon come down, three psychic recharge, and they switch. So that's going to be a knockout. But player B does have the res response knockout right behind it, right behind. So here comes a an Ultra Ball discarding a Rescue Stretcher and a Giratina Prism Star, an interesting choice. I don't remember what the attack does, but the ability is you get to attach two Psychic Energy from the hand directly to it. So um, I'm sure the attack is a solid option. Um, you only really need like one Malamar in play. So... Uh, in order to pull off that attack, it is a four energy attack, so two from the ability, plus one from the hand, plus the psychic recharge. It's really just a fast way, if you have enough energy in hand, to really take the knockout. And with so many search options for Pokemon, you aren't really searching out, like... Uh, it's not such a big deal to...
Sorry. Uh, it's not such a big deal to set up that attack. But we do see on player B's turn a whole lot of setup going on to Rubombi in play. Really just taking advantage of all that setup. An Ultra Ball in hand, so that can actually search out what is needed. Um, an attachment to the active. If the active gets knocked out, then the game is lost anyway, so might as well just set up and set up for a judge or some kind of some kind of disrupt play. And here comes the KO. And we'll see how player A responds to this. They're both at two prizes left, but if uh, yep, here comes a Mimikyu, copycat, an energy, and a retreat. And copycat, 220 damage, minus 20 over the resistance, 200 damage, enough to knock out a 190 HP Pokemon. And that's the end of game one. Player A takes the victory, 1-0 with Malamar. And we'll see how they decide to set up the following game. So as I mentioned earlier, the matchup, you do have the advantage of the resistance with with the with the metal attackers with Magnazone and Decimated Quasma, uh, Dialga, and all of that. But you do have that stage two setup, which is harder to set up. It it is slower. Um, it's not a simple treasure for basic, treasure for basic, bench basic, and then treasure for evolution, treasure for evolution, evolve. Um, your attackers are basic, so it is kind of the same thing. They do have similar attack costs. It's four energy to take the knockout. With Necrozma, it's four energy to take the knockout. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see how game two pro progresses. Player A starts with a mini queue. It's a it's a decent starter. You do have that filch to just really set up at the beginning. Player B starts off with that Magnetong, uh, Magnemite. You really do need to get that Magnemite just to get started. You know, really start with it. Have that in play, and then you can retreat it later. But starting with it isn't such a big deal. Your opponent isn't going to have an explosive start. This format really slowed down compared to the previous year. Um, there... I think the... The only attack in this format that could really take the knockout was um, is Buzzwool Sledgehammer with a Beast Energy, and that's not that's not in this deck right now, so it's not such a big deal. Um, here comes a Mount Coronet, just bringing back that one Metal Energy. Probably gonna attach it to the active so that a retreat can happen. And then a pass. I mean, you got eight cards in hand. You can't play any of them. Uh, it's going to be a retreat to the Tapu Lele, actually. I don't know why this is happening. I don't know why player B decides to do this. But, yeah. Um, your Magnet Might isn't really in, in any threat at this point. There's no real reason to retreat it, to put it out of harm's way. And you can force your opponent into playing the seven prize game if you do decide to do that. So, yeah. But anyway, here comes a. I think that's a Cynthia and then an Acrobike. And then here comes a Treasure. Just really setting up all those, all those NKs on the bench. Um, the NK, yeah, it's it's a basic that evolves. You really need that as soon as possible. It's it's all of your support. You don't play any support to draw. You don't play any support to attack. It's uh, to search. You just, it's just energy attachments, and then a filch for two. Filch, as I mentioned earlier, to. I mean, Mimikyu is an all-around great, great card. It's a non-GX. Filch draws you cards. Great to start off with. And then Copycat. Uh, you can really just take return knockouts on anything. Or at least 
return with a huge amount of damage. So I mean, as we met, as we saw last game, uh, copycat takes the KO on a Dustmate Necrozma. Um, against the Zoroark, it does a hundred damage. That's a decent amount of damage to set up for the next turn with a choice band. You can attack with something else. And, uh, oh, looks like it's just a pass. I think it's a Cynthia and then a pass. Uh, yep, there's a Cynthia in the discard pile. And player A really has the opportunity to take the reins. I think player B has a Stevens Resolve in hand. I couldn't quite see that. But it's just going to be an Ultra Ball from player A. Probably searching out Malamar. Nothing really else you want to search out if you have a supporter in hand. Some way to draw in hand. Yep, there's a Lily for four. Pretty solid draw. Here comes down a Dusk, a Necrozma, simple Necrozma GX. An Ultra Ball discarding an uh, Acrobite, discarding an Ultra Ball. And then an Ultra Ball discarding a. Okay, a Treasure discarding an Ultra Ball. Not the other way around. And grabbing a Malamar probably, and Psychic Recharge to the Necrozma on the bench. Sorry about that. Um, it's yeah, not much else is happening. It's just gonna be a filt, and then player B has the rare candy minus zone in hand. With two energy to attach, and then two more energy in hand, it seems, going to the bench, and then zero energy in hand, zero cards in hand. Just taking the knockout, one card in hand, that's the prize card, and then another card in hand is going to be the top deck for the next turn. So we'll see how player A decides to respond to this. A psychic recharge comes down, another energy comes down, oh, potentially. I see a Guzman hand. This could be a good opportunity to Guzma up the Magna Zone and take a KO. You don't really want to play the seven card, game, the seven prize game, but if you do manage to remove your opponent's respond options, this could be a, this could be a good playing, good turn, good, good chance to turn things around. Is what I'm trying to say. So here comes attached to the active. I don't think it's gonna go. Oh. Okay, I'm just gonna wait until player A decides to figure out what they're going to do. Attached to the active, yeah. I don't think a Hypnosis is going to come down because there's just really no need to that in K. Giving your in K a 50-50 chance of getting knocked out is not ideal, especially when it puts your opponent to even prizes. It's probably just for a retreat, so here comes down a treasure. Probably a Malamar came down as well. I didn't get to see that. A Malamar to the active. So if there's enough psychic energy in the disco pile, which I think there are. Yeah, one. And it's going to be a retreat with that altar of the moon. And attack for 190 damage. It's 10 plus 60 for every psychic that you discard off it, and you did have to discard all of them. So that's 190 damage. Taking that knockout on that Tapu Lele. And player B has to respond to this. How do you respond to what is probably going to be a whole lot of damage coming down every single turn? It's just a draw and a pass. Wow. Um. Now, if player A has some kind of response to this, some sort of, yep, there's a whole bunch of energy being attached. Here comes a Guzma on the top of the way. And, oh, is the Let Loose going to come down? I would not play the Let Loose at this point. You know your opponent doesn't have anything. And here comes the KO. Player A is down to two prize cards. Player B is still at five. Nest ball comes down, searching out a cutie fly. 
And if an energy is in hand, which I don't think there is. No, it's just a Guzma and a Magnezone. And here comes a pass. So all that's necessary is a switch, and I think I see the switch in hand. Switch to Malamar. Choice band. Does Choice band take the KO? Yeah, it's, it should. 190 plus 3. If I'm not mistaken, that takes the KO. But Tabu Lele for Cynthia. Cynthia comes down. Really just needs to draw that one last energy. Uh, and there it is. Energy plus three psychic recharge. Retreat and attack for the KO. And there's the handshake. Player A wins 2-0 over Magnezone. Um, just, a, just a more consistent, faster deck, I guess. I mean... Yeah, there's not much else you can do when you draw hands full of energy and you attach them everywhere, but if you don't draw anything else behind that, not much you can do. Thank you for watching, everybody. Again, sorry about the, about the awful camera angle. I'll do better next time. And uh, sorry about the distractions as well. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.